digital phenotype is, is, is a concept uh, that you know, digital technology is embedded in our lives so deeply that it's possible to characterize health and disease based on how we, we interact with our personal devices, uh, particularly smartphones. Um, what if instead of just thinking about our interactions with one device, we think about it in the sense of uh, monitoring the whole spectrum of our everyday activities and then linking those uh, everyday activities to uh, states of health and disease and then uh, you know, build these predictive models that can be early warning signs of what could be going um, wrong uh, with you or perhaps uh, uh, provide you with, with uh, uh, guidelines for how to com continue doing the kinds of things that you are doing that are, that are working out. So for quite some time now, we've been interested in this problem of dietary monitoring. You know, eating detection uh, is, is really, really important to identify certain kinds of uh, you know, eating disorders, for example, in, in, and there are many other applications for it. We've been thinking about how we can develop uh, novel devices and novel sensing approaches. And one of the ways uh, we've, we've attacked this problem was by developing uh, a wearable necklace, and uh, we wanted to be able to see if we could track, uh, for example, jawbone movements using a uh, light-based uh, prox proximity sensor um, it was a bit hard sometimes for us to keep it in, in, in the location that would allow us to track the jawbone accurately. You know, the likelihood that someone would actually be wearing this on a daily basis um, is actually, um, you know, quite low. Took inspiration from the Band-Aid, and so we developed a new architecture. And um, the nice feature of this is that we can actually eliminate this sort of mechanical problem of having the wireless move around. So, I, so we can basically... Uh, uh, stick it to the jawbone itself, actually inside the body, so actually doing some computation inside the mouth. And so we've developed an even smaller device, and uh, we've, we've actually run some experiments now where we can actually have this device running um, you know, inside the mouth with a battery and so on, which is biocompatible. And so some of the applications that we envision here are, again, dietary monitoring, um, you know, being able to identify actually uh, food categories and actually the amount of food uh, that you're eating and just oral health in general and, and potentially even physiological sensing that you can, um, you can do by uh, being in direct contact with saliva, for example.